What's up guys and welcome to another Blender Quick Tip. Today I'm going to be showing you how to recreate this camera shaking effect that you can see right here in this render. Now it's actually a really simple effect to pull off and we're going to be recreating it with F-curve modifiers and if you don't know what they are I'm going to show you right now. But first I just want to let you know that if you want to learn how to make this particular render I'll be releasing a tutorial on that very soon so make sure to check that out. I'll be leaving a link in the description and I'll be leaving a card up on the video as well which you'll see pop up right here. Right, on with the quick tip. So we've got our scene set up here. It's a really simple scene. It's just a looping animation of this camera passing through a tunnel. And I'm just gonna be using this scene as an example to show you how to recreate that camera shaking effect. Now, before we go into using the F-curve modifiers, you actually need to add a keyframe onto the parameter that you want to modulate first. So we're gonna to go to our camera here and we're gonna to go to the camera settings and the two parameters we're going to modulate are this shift X and shift Y and as you can see the shift X sort of moves it on the X axis and the shift Y moves it up and down. Now before you use the F curve modifiers you actually need to add a keyframe onto the parameters that you want to modulate. So I'm just going to go to my first frame here. I'm going to apply a keyframe on the X axis and a keyframe on the Y. So that's given us something to work with now. Now just come to the top here where your mouse turns into a little cross. Drag that screen in and we're going to change this editor type to graph editor. Now I want you to click on shift X and here's what you need to do. You need to come to modifier section here. If you can't see this window, just hit N on your keyboard. That brings it up. Now we're going to add a modifier and we're going to add noise. Now what that does here is it adds this sort of random wave generation, which corresponds to the parameter that you've keyframed in. So in this case, the shift X parameter is basically gonna follow this path, modulating up and down following this waveform. So if I hit play, you'll see what I mean. But it's very strong here, so you need to tame it out a bit. Pump the scale up, that basically stretches out the wave. So it's still quite strong, but it's just moving the camera a little bit slower now. So as it's still strong, we're just gonna drop the strength down. We'll say about 0.1. Great, so that's that done. But what you'll notice is it doesn't actually loop seamlessly. If you're trying to get a perfect loop, you're gonna get a sudden jump over here when um, when the animation comes to an end. And that's because of the random nature of the noise generation. So if you just expand this here, it actually gives you some options to restrict the frame range. And if you've got a keen eye, you'll notice that has deleted our noise pattern. So it basically does what it says. It restricts the noise generator um, in between these frames and now all, the, all these frames are set to zero it's not giving us any room for the noise wave to actually fit in so the first thing we're going to do we're going to set the end to the same value as our scene so mine's at 300 frames so set yours to whatever length your animation is and you can see that's brought the noise back I'm going to pump these values back up just because it's hard to see what we're doing so this is just a temporary thing I'm going to bring it back down later so I pumped that up now we can see what we're doing with this restrict flame frame range. It actually allows us to smooth out the noise pattern so we can get the wave to fall on exactly the same point um, at the start and the end. So we'll set the start value to one and as you can see, as you pump up the in, it sort of smooths out this noise pattern. This is crucial if you want your animation to loop properly. So we'll set the in frame to about 100. We'll set the out to, let's say 200 in our case. And as you can see, this gives us a nice ease into the noise wave, which effectively means that the shake, the camera shake is gonna loop seamlessly. I would just drop this to one frame before your, um, your end frame, just for a good measure. So I'm gonna set that to 299. <clears throat> and now I'm gonna drop this strength back down to 0.1. And now all you gotta do is just repeat those steps, but for your Y now. So we're gonna add a modifier, add noise. Let's pump the scale up to whatever. Drop the strength to about 0.1. Restrict frame range. Set the end to 299. Put the start at one. In, we'll say 100. Out, we'll say 200. Now let's get rid of this graph editor. We don't need that now. And let's watch the animation. Now 
And there you have it, a nice simple camera shake that loops seamlessly. And obviously you can play around with the F-curve modifier settings until you get something that you like. Right, thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed the quick tip. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you do want to learn how to make this full render, I'll be leaving a link in the description for that if you want to check that out. And also feel free to check out my website where you can find more of my work. That's nebmotion.co.uk.